As promised, here's a little bit of a bonus uh, fourth view of the triple vector product, vector triple product, um, and just a tiny introduction to quaternions. There's a lot more to say about these, but it's pretty. This, this, uh, I just figured it'd be a nice addition. Um, the cross product, remember, is not associative. Way back in the first view, we looked at how it's not associative, um, and though that the um, the vector triple product identity which led to uh, the Jacobi identity is a measure basically of how, it, how much it's not associative. But you don't just stop there. Um, you can actually make it part of an associative product, which is pretty awesome. Okay, So here's what we're going to do is we're going to combine numbers or scalars basically and vectors. And by combining those and having the right notion of product, we're going to have something that's associative it generalizes the dot product, the cross product, and the product of complex numbers all together. It's pretty awesome. Okay, so here's what we do. Let's say capital A is a combination of a number, A0, plus A1i, plus, actually, you know what, I'm not going to put arrows because I'm just going to get tired of it, plus A2j, and you don't usually put arrows over quaternion units anyway. So i, j, and k, you can think of as the standard basis vectors, but we're just going to really think of them as symbols right now. Very much like i is a symbol, um, an algebraic symbol in complex numbers. So like this guy looks awful lot like a complex number, real plus imaginary part. In fact, we're going to take that and run with it. We're going to say this is still the real part, real of a, and this guy is the imaginary part of a. So we're going to use those analogies both to vectors, i, j, k, and to real and imaginary, uh, you know, complex numbers throughout. Okay, so um, here's the, the definition. I wanted to tell you what happens if I multiply something like this by like b, which is going to be the same thing, b naught plus etc. Well, to be, to deserve the name of a product, it's got to distribute over addition. That's always true. If you have addition in the mix, you'll always be distributed over that if you call it a product. Always, always, always. Um, no matter what other rules you, vi you violate. Um, so I really just need to tell you what happens to all the individual pieces because I can kind of foil it out. Okay, so a naught times b naught, 1 times 1 obviously should be 1. Okay, ij, that's where the cross product is going to come in. It's going to be minus ji, which is nk. Okay, jk is going to be the same as minus kj is going to be i, and ki, which is going to be minus ik is going to be j, just basically the cross product. It's exactly as if you were taking the cross product of the basis vectors, okay? Now, what I have to tell you is what is i times i? You might think, wait, shouldn't that be 0? Well, that's the, that's the big difference here. I'm going to let it not be 0. That's going away from the cross product. But this is where the idea of the analogy to complex numbers come in. i squared, or i i, is going to be minus 1. And same for j squared and k squared. So in that sense, these guys are all acting like i. They're all acting like three different versions of the imaginary unit in complex numbers. Okay. Now I have to say this isn't a, a drastic violation of the spirit of generalizing the cross product because notice when I take the two different ones by each other, I get something that still lives in the imaginary part. When I take i times i, the imaginary part of this guy is 0. And that's where the vector information lives. So i squared um, it really is actually okay to think of it as still pretty similar to the fact that i cross i is zero. That's re reflected in the fact that i, cr I times i in quaternion multiplication has no imaginary part, it just has the real part. And the minus one, it turns out to make everything work out beautifully. Okay, so, um, yeah, so suppose I have a of this form and b is the same form with b, with little b's, okay. Then what happens? Well, it's always useful to look at separately at real and imaginary, just what I was alluding to. Okay, so it's an easy exercise that if you look at the imaginary part. Oh, uh, let's say um, let's actually just say that a naught and b naught are zero for now. Okay, so let's say they're pure imaginary. So a b are pure imaginary. So basically carrying pure vector information and no scalar information. Um, and so this is a1i, a2j, a3k, similar with the b's. It's a pretty easy exercise to show that the imaginary part of that is exactly just, if you think of the, this as a vector and b as a vector, it's just the cross product, okay? With the i's, j's, and k's in the usual way. And the real part is super cool. It's just minus the dot product of those vectors.
Because what's the only thing that lives in the real part? It's where you take like i times i, um, and you'll get a minus. Okay, so that's a good exercise to do. So this is super cool. We were trying to generalize the cross product in a way that would make it associative, and we still haven't proved that yet. Definitely, it'll be the punchline. But we automatically get the dot product coming in as well. So another way to say it is, it's something that combines the cross and the dot. Now the minus sign might be a little annoying, but that's really important to have that analogy also with with uh, complex numbers. And it turns out to be crucial for the associativity as well. Okay, now what about that's when they're pure imaginary. Um, I'm focusing on that because let's say if a is just a scalar, just a real part, just a naught and no i j k, and b is a general guy b2j plus b3k, well, it's not interesting, it's not particularly weird to multiply these guys, okay? Then ab is just, okay, I'm just multiplying two scalars together, and then this is just scalar multiplication, scalar times vector, basically, a naught b1i plus dot dot dot. So it's really a naught b naught plus the scalar a naught times the vector part of b, if you just so call that the vector part like I was just doing. Okay, so that's not particularly interesting. Okay, it has to come along for the ride to make this all a nice um, algebraic structure where everything can be multiplied by everything else. But it's not super super interesting. Okay, so here's the here's the cool here's the even more cool stuff. Quaternions are super cool. Um, so here's the the claim is that the product is associative. A times B C equals A B C for all A B and C. Okay, no matter whether they have real imaginary part, whatever. Okay, but first of all, my subclaim, okay, kind of a little lemma that I'm not going to show, is that the real parts work out fine. If these guys have real parts, it's just more clutter, but it seems like that's not the thing that's going to really cause the trouble. Okay, that's not where the vector and the cross product and all that kind of stuff. So the real parts are okay. So to, sim to simplify, the notation. Let's just assume that a is just the vector a. In other words, it's just a one i plus. T -t -t -t, okay, no real, no real part. All pure imaginary. B is the vector b, and c is the vector c. Okay, and then I just want to work out what are a times b c, and with the parentheses in the other order. Okay, so do the do the product first and use the exercise. It's a combination of and I'm going to just not even draw any arrows anymore, just to hopefully let you know that they're. Well, I don't know. Eh, now maybe I'll draw arrows. When I'm thinking of them as vectors, I'll draw arrows. What the heck? Okay. Okay. So there's that has a real part, and that has this imaginary part. Okay. Now I do have to foil this out a little bit. Um, this this remember just has the the um, the imaginary part. That's a scalar. Okay. So I'm just going to get that scalar times the vector a. So really, quaternion multiplication combines scalar multiplication, dot product, and cross product. It's a good, it's a good way to say it. Okay. Then, okay, I've got this guy. Now this is um, a vector, an imaginary quaternion, times another imaginary quaternion, so I get the both parts of it. And so that's going to be minus a dot b cross c, and then plus gay cross b cross c. Of course, a triple vector product comes out. Okay, and you might already be looking at this and saying, "Ah, oh, that's interesting. That has to do might have to do with the triple vector product identity." Okay, what this the, the role of this one is maybe is unclear. Okay, so what if we do it in the opposite order? Okay, good time to pause if you want to do this yourself. Okay, a b. Okay, use the exercise. That's a combination of dot and cross. Okay, times c. Okay, so now uh, scalar times quaternion is easy. That's just scalar times vector times vector c. And then <coughs> um, I'm going to have minus, okay, a cross b dot c. That's the dot part of quaternion multiplication. And then plus the triple vector product, of course, in the opposite with the opposite parentheses. Okay. Not surprising that those come out. Alrighty, so let's see what's going on. First of all, this is the, the scalar triple product, 
And one of the properties of that is if you um, you can change the order of the dot without worrying about it. Uh, that's always uh, commutative. And you can cyclically permute everything. So when I subtract these, what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract these guys, and I'm going to hope it's going to be 0. When I subtract them, these are going to cancel. So that isn't actually going to give me a problem. So that scalar triple product is really um, a very nice, simple thing. Remember, scalar triple products have to do with forms, because about like three forms and volumes and things like that. So secretly, there's forms secretly in here, and it's telling us that that part of it is, is easy. OK. Now, um, I'm going to get the difference between these two guys, and I'm going to get the difference between these two guys. OK. Now, so it, if you look at it carefully, it doesn't quite line up in an obvious way with the vector triple product identity. But that's because we haven't used Jacobi. So the Jacobi identity says, which you can prove, which I proved in the first view, as a consequence of the vector triple product identity, but it's really kind of deeper. It's a fact about any kind of infinitesimal symmetry, really. And that links up with the third view I was telling you about. OK. This is one view of the Jacobi identity. Um, this is equal to, um, let's see, in my notes I've got it messed up, I think. Um, Let's see. All right, this is, first I just need to, so this is what's, what's going to happen. I'm going to take the difference between these two guys, and so that's the, the thing I want to understand with the Jacobi identity. Okay, so I just need to get the, into the usual form of the Jacobi identity. I just need to change a sign. Okay, so I'm just going to change the order of these guys. Okay, that's how you usually see it is the parentheses aren't messing around, and all I'm doing is, is cyclically permuting the three vectors. This plus the other cyclic permutation is 0. Or in other words, this is minus the other one that we're missing, where the b is out, and then this is c cross a. OK, so that's the Jacobi identity right there. OK, and it's in service of understanding what would happen if I took the difference between these guys to show associativity. OK, okay so now I use the vector triple product identity. That's minus the quantity b dot c a minus, oh no, sorry, b a c, my bad, b dot a, no, no, b dot c a, there we go. Okay, um, and then I'm hoping I'm getting the signs right. I mean, it should work because I know it's supposed to. Um, and then that's b dot c a, I'm trying to get this done in 15 because my Um, so exercise, check my signs, right? Um, my screencaster is going to crap out soon because I'm not, I'm not sure why it does that. Okay, so that's going to be a key calculation, okay? So now, oh, I wish I had a little bit more room, but I'm basically going to take this minus this guy, okay? So what am I going to get? These guys are going to cancel. I'm going to get this, okay, the difference of these guys, this minus this, which is this, and guess what? That exactly cancels this minus this, okay? Because that's going to come up with a plus sign and it's going to cancel. So the whole thing, the difference is equal to zero. Oh, uh, you can't see that. Uh, I read, wrote too low. Okay. So A, B, C minus A, B, C equals zero. And it's really cool how we've used um, a lot of the crucial stuff that's coming up in the other views. The Jacobi identity, the vector triple product identity, a little bit about the scalar triple product, um, and it's a beautiful thing. And so quaternion multiplication is associative. One brief comment, I think I have a minute left. Um, the, in the 19th century, there's a big debate about quaternions versus vectors and also people who didn't like either of them. Um, and one of the people, reasons people don't use quaternions that much anymore outside of mathematics and a few applied fields, like uh, supposedly computer graphics and things use them now. Um, one of the reasons mathematicians sort of don't focus on them as much in, in a lot of situations is that they seem to be very special to R3. Okay, we really, um, in the other videos, I was very interested in what generalizes to Rn. Quaternions are really special. You can't just do, you can't do IJKL or IJKLM or something like that. Okay, turns out that the way you generalize them, something I alluded to very briefly before, is Clifford algebras. And I don't know if I'm going to do any videos on that ever, but it's cool stuff. You can look it up.